Welcome everybody. If you're curious about how to learn to be more compassionate and how to have commitment to connection with people, we're gonna talk about chapter four of the touch crisis this week. How do we have curiosity, compassion, and commitment to good communication even when things seem challenging? One of the things we talk about is how can we feel into how others are experiencing the world, hear what they need and see how to give it to them. For example, let's say you're being overwhelmed by touch. Like you've got a kid who's coming up like, mom, I wanna touch you. Or someone at a business event puts their hand on your shoulder. Or you have a friend who feels really clingy and you just need some space. How can you say yes to the person and make them feel accepted, wanted, heard, and seen, but no to the touch? We're going to talk about that right after the show reel. <laughs> when I was interviewing people for this book and we started talking about touch and connection, one of the really interesting things I found was when I was talking to a nurse and she worked with newborn babies and she sat there and she thought about it. And she said, I love holding babies facing outwards sometimes. She said that way they have the feeling that I've got their back. And I thought that was a really interesting way to look at how am I holding my baby even. Another man that I interviewed spoke about a hospital stay. And when he was in the hospital, he would ask the nurses to tell them something that made them really happy that day. And he noticed that if they told him something happy before they touched him and the nurses that played along would feel more connected to him. They felt more nurturing than those who just tended him in a rush or who wouldn't answer him and wouldn't communicate. And the same thing happens with teachers in classrooms. Right, they did a study where they took a, um, a control group. So teachers that didn't talk to their students at the beginning of the day. And then they took another group where they had teachers greet their students in a positive manner at the door. And for the control group, not much changed in the classroom. The time on task was about the same, about mid to 50%. And disruptive behaviors happened about 15% of the classroom time. However, when students were greeted at the door, even communicated to by their teachers, we're not even talking about touch right now, we're just talking about being acknowledged. Disruptive behaviors dropped less than 5% of the time. And time that students were on task skyrocketed to over 80. So you see, even when we say no to touch, but still help people feel connected and wanted, we can make big impacts with individuals. So how do you say yes to a person and no to touch? Well, first, read the book, The Touch Crisis, but find ways that you can acknowledge, like, hey, honey, I know you really want a hug right now. Can we do it later? Or instead of a hug, can we do X, Y, Z? So give them another option. Or say, I would really love to snuggle with you right now, but I feel the need this for space too. Can we do it later? So giving them other options instead. Or hey, instead of a hug, how about a high five? So let them know that you hear their need for touch. You experience it, you understand, but you also are setting your own boundaries and your own needs as well. I do wanna remind you though, that there is physical impact of touch-based support. So there was a study that was done that showed that greater partner support, and this is self-reporting of all the participants, but there was more oxytocin in men and women before and after warm contact. So in women, higher partner support was correlated with lower blood pressure and there was higher oxytocin. And remember oxytocin is that bonding, the cuddling, the connection hormone. That's also linked to lower blood pressure at baseline and to lower norepinephrine. When you touch people in a healthy communicative manner, the people you're asking for 
are more likely to agree to your request. And as the favor you're asking for becomes larger, touch plays a more important role, especially when it's with someone the same gender or someone you're closely connected to. And remember that touch can be interpreted different ways. There are many studies that show this based upon how you touch, what kind of mood you're in, what kind of mood they're in. So just remember to be open, communicate what you need, I'd love to hear in the comments down below and remember your love, you're loving and you are lovable. Namaste.